How's it going everybody? I got a special conversation for you all today. I have a special guest with us, Devious Grunt from the channel Devious Grunt Alliance. And if you guys don't know that channel, you definitely want to check it out if you want to do anything esports related when it comes to Haley. He does amazing stuff when it comes to HDS highlights, analysis, and commentary. And uh, why don't you introduce yourself, man? What's up, guys? Pleasure to meet you all. Thank you, Kevin, for having me on the show. Kevin Kulix, great channel. I've been following for like <laughs> since 2017. We've been friends with each other. So it's great to kind of have my debut on the show here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a pleasure. I've been following HGS for quite a while. I've been a fan of Halo like since I was like nine years old. And I found out about competitive within like, I think like late 2011. And since then, like I'm sure many of you uh, probably seen for yourself, it's super entertaining. And I figured why not make a channel around it? So that's what my whole spiel is about. Kind of the same way. I think I found competitive Halo during like the Halo 3 heydays, like around like 2009 or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. I missed that boat. <laughs> I missed that boat. That was the one part I mean, I got in that reach, which, uh, you know, you know, it is it is what it is. But <laughs> it it's took some time super, to get there. <laughs> super, it was super exciting for like the time when I was like 14, 15. Right on, yeah. And so I wanted to bring uh, Devious Grunt onto the channel today because I want to talk about some recent events that have been happening with the competitive side of Halo. Uh, one being the Anaheim event, which he actually worked at and we actually worked with the HDS team. So I kind of wanted to discuss that experience with them and also talking about the recent roster changes and how the pro scene is looking right now and how Cloud9 has been dominating. And is that going to be pretty much like the roadmap looking forward when it comes to the teams here? So. First off, let's jump into the Anaheim event that recently just happened. And so, again, like I said, you worked at that event, so I kind of wanted to know, like, what kind of stuff did you do uh, for the uh, Anaheim event there? Right, it was a super cool experience. I got to work with the DreamHack uh, whole group. And if you didn't know, they're actually based in Sweden. So it was kind of interesting having their uh, kind of like time zones interact with mine. I think they worked a lot through like through the night uh, making the videos. Uh, what I basically was a part of is uh, the whole content team for playing the uh, the videos that play before matches, like whether it's like Optic versus Cloud9, I'll have like a little pre-match video. So I was basically like part of that team to help make that content. So we would basically have to go through each day and pick out like the best moments of those, like just like teams and make that video like through the night to release the next day onto the live stream. So it was really like quick work. And uh, but it was really cool to like kind of be a part of that system. I was actually also in a group with both uh, Muggsy and uh, Hastings. If you guys probably know from the community, I was working with them to also post uh, social media content online. So any like clips that we saw like they're really cool. Um, I was like kind of like in that group to provide content for that too. So really cool experience. And I'm actually um, as of now, I'm actually going to be working for future events as well. So maybe it was like, kind of like a little test run. Um, but yeah, it was a great experience overall. I mean, I, I kind of went like, well, who else does a really good job of clipping out awesome highlights of HGS events? <laughs> uh, well, this guy right here. I just went, yeah. like, how do you come? Do you just like sit there and just watch the live stream and just kind of like put time markers down? Like what happens or anything cool? Like you seem to capture all the awesome stuff. And I'm like, dude, I don't know how you do that with like not like spending an entire day watching like a live stream. Well. Um, that's how it started though. That's how it started. <laughs> um, when I first did my first tournament kind of like highlight breakdown, it started with just me like being a big fan of the tournament. I was like, oh, this tournament's so cool. I want to sh show everyone like the best moments from this tournament. So I took like a few clips, not even like the whole tournament, just to like, put that up. And at the time, my channel wasn't too serious. I was just, you know, making some videos for fun. But that video did super well. And I figured, you know what, let me just do this for each event. And as like time progressed, like it started getting more and more views. I'm like, okay, like let me actually pay attention to like every stream, every like game, every series. And now what I do nowadays is just literally I just like clip anything that's remotely clippable. And I'll, by the end of the tournament, I'll have like three to four hours of footage, which is a lot. But I'll just sift through that and like narrow it down to like either a half hour or like a, an hour of what I recently had because there's like four different streams. It's great. I love watching those highlights is because like in case you missed it, because, you know, I, I mean, I usually try catching like some of the, some, you know, here and there throughout the day, but definitely catch on the final. So there's a lot of awesome moments that happen that I tend to miss out. And basically I go to Deepest Grass Alliance channel to you know, catch all the good stuff that I missed. And uh, so one thing I also want to talk about is Anaheim was obviously like the event itself of the players and teams and stuff like that. So I wanted to ask you like, 
who were the out the teams that really stood out that were maybe o- overperformed that you didn't expect to? And I'll say the same with the players as well. What players do you feel like really stood out with this event? Right. So I think in terms of teams, uh, there's four teams that really come to mind. Um, obviously, we have Cloud9, who the question you got to ask yourself now is like if they're going to continue to dominate like for the rest of the year or like however long they'll be together as a team. Uh, the second team, I think a lot of people need to give EU United their respect. I think they proved this event that they are like a top three to four team. Uh, they got second at Raleigh if you watch that event. And a lot of people were kind of skeptical because they, they, you know, they said like they had like, an easy bracket, but they beat some of the best teams at Anaheim. And for me, like no matter what, even if they kind of like do subpar within like online performances from here on out, when it comes to the actual land performance where it matters, they showed up and they they did an amazing job. I think they all get their props. Um, Spartan and Ryanu particularly on that team, I think they stepped up big time. Spartan was one of the biggest performers um, of the event, I would say. Um, Optic Gaming, uh, I know a lot of people know uh, Lucid. I think he stepped up big time, him, Trippy, really the whole team um, really stepped up in uh, a big form. And I think they proved to me, because the one thing, like we all know how talented like player uh, like a player like Lucid is, the one thing for me though is just when it comes to the high pressure moments like can he take his team to the victory and i know like it's a team game as an individual lucid is probably still like one of the most talented players in halo infinite and even though they got second place they proved to me uh like all the players that they are capable of taking down cloud nine and while it wasn't like some it wasn't close in the winner's bracket series they reached a new level i think they they played the best that they did ever and i think uh, optic gaming was another standout team and one more team I'll just touch on, uh, Fnatic. Uh, Fnatic was a team that pushed Cloud9 to their limits. And while they kind of got top 12, they kind of like simmered down a little bit of inconsistency there. I think they showed kind of like maybe uh, like a weak spot for Cloud9 that a lot of teams, like pro teams, might be looking towards and maybe kind of learn from. Even if it was quote unquote some bad Halo that like I think a player on Cloud9 said that kind of like forced them to bad habits in that series. I think it's a series that a lot of teams will be looking at to sort of uh, maybe find some hints of how to maybe take down Cloud9 or at least like a start to it. Yeah, because they were absolutely dominating. This, it seemed like like the all night events before Raleigh, like Cloud9 was just kind of like up there, like top five, kind of top 10 thing. And then all of a sudden Raleigh yeah. dominated and right. had been just slapping k- kids silly sense, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the testament yeah. to the players. If you followed Halo 5 at the end of Halo 5, you know the players at Cloud9. They are like menaces. Uh, I don't know if that's the right word. They are like so talented on land. Like they literally like go full throttle. They are twice as good. And when I saw Cloud9 win at Raleigh, it wasn't too shocking to me, honestly. Like like they were getting top six before that, but like it just showed me that I doubted these players. And right now I can't doubt them. They looked on top at the end of Halo 5 and they look on top right now. I mean, all of them besides uh, Penguin obviously Penguin. were part of Splice that won the HS what, World Finals back in 2018. So right. you know, they're familiar with the, the main stage victories right there mm. for sure. Uh, one team I want to talk about in particular from that event was Space Station Gaming. I know they came from the like bracket, the pool of hell basically. It's kind of how I think a lot of people kind of phrase it because it was just a very competitive uh, pool of teams right there. But even after they got out pool play, they still seemed to really underperform. And I was wondering if you kind of noticed anything that might have like threw the through their game off or something honestly it's it's tough i think sometimes things just don't click and this team was new uh they had flazen as a replacement for someone else i forget who the original person was on the roster and sometimes just things don't click they had a very tough pool any team on that pool literally could have gotten first or last it's just like that's how close it was and when it came to bracket play they had an unfortunate uh, first round match in that I think they were facing a very talented upcoming team. I, I believe they faced um, ESA Red. And some of the players in that team, I think, are really uh, talented players, like uh, the upcoming players. I think uh, Collect in particular. Um, but again, like they should beat these teams. So I don't really know what the core issue could be. It could be just like a chemistry thing. They could have just, like, obviously things weren't clicking for a reason. Hopefully, though, they'll uh, learn their, from the, what their mistakes were and they'll rebound for next event. Yeah, I definitely still view them as like a top eight team for sure. I mean, having Tylenol and Ace on the team, like you're gonna make something right. happen, right? And so uh, I think maybe kind of go into our next topic here is talking about the recent events that happened after Anaheim. And that was uh, the trade of Pistola mo- getting booted out of Optic and moved in replace was Formal, who was previously <laughs> part of Space Station Gaming, then left to go to Sentinels. And then as World 2 came back, he was kind of a bit of a free agent. And now he's back 
with uh, competitive Halo on Optic. Now, I want to ask you the question, uh, do you think that was a good move for Optic? Definitely premature, I think. I think um, anyone who's been watching Halo, like Halo Infinite Esports for what it is so far, you kind of get the feeling that maybe like a lot of teams besides like Cloud9 or even Sentinels when they have like a fully pra like practice roster, these teams might not be even at their highest skill enough to take down the talent that's on Cloud9. And I think when it come when it came to Optic, they had a great performance. I think all four of those players actually played super well. The one player that really lacked in particularly uh, against Cloud9, I think there was a Reddit post. Uh, someone posted uh, like statistics on it, and stats are only only like one aspect of it. But Pistola really did struggle against the Cloud9 series. Um, I think it's a very premature move. I think like eventually, if like you know this is an ongoing thing, I think there's a lot of factors into it. I think they're trying to they're trying to making like a bet for the future, like saying like okay, like if we make this change now, especially when we have Formal, who's like already on Optic, like that's an opportunity we can't pass. I saw some people saying like maybe Formal was getting offers from other teams, and they just decided like you know what, like let's just take Formal right now while we have him. So it could be a situation like that. Um, I also think that regardless though, like Formal should benefit the team. I think um, he offers a lot of firepower, a lot of like just individual talent, which Pistola does have, but obviously like Formal has to, I think, I believe another level. Of course, we'll have to see how things play out. I think no matter what, um, you know, every player on every pro team is super talented. It all, it all depends on how the teamwork is. So we'll have to see like how the scrims go. I think it will improve the team. But again, it's very early to say. I think it was a very quick move. It was very unexpected. I think if anything, this move could have been done way down the line. But I think, you know, the players in Optic were kind of like just making a gamble. They was like saying like, okay, like we already know right now this, te this team ceiling. And I think also they hit their ceiling at uh, Anaheim. I think they're just making a bet to make the best possible team to take down Cloud9. And they're just, make they're just being very quick about it. I think it also might be a little bit of a back-end logistics to the whole thing since Formal was already part of the Optic organization. Exactly. And so he was a bit of a free agent and I guess he still wants to keep competing in Halo. I thought he was going to be kind of just like, in eh, test the water, see how it is. And then if it mm -hmm. you know, doesn't turn out the way he wants it, then just kind of You're bounce right, kind though. of thing. You're right though. Um, Formal, I think, hasn't entirely proven himself yet. I know like obviously he has all the accolades he has like from past Halos and like his Call of Duty career, of course. But it is a gamble, I think. Um, at Raleigh, like, of course, we all know the game five, like, he had an incredible performance. But for the majority of that series or even the, the tournament, he wasn't really a standout player. Mm -hmm. So I think um, he has definitely improved from them. But it is a gamble in going with formal, just saying that he's going to be that star player to really bring them to a new level. Yeah, I, th I would say, like, from what I kind of saw, at least from when I was watching, I, of course, I didn't see the entire tournament. You probably have better analysis. And you can call me out if I'm wrong about this. But I felt like Ola was just kind of like, doing generally about like you know nothing really stand out but nothing bad either though you just kind of like right in the middle kind of like you know breaking even in kd kind of situations where like i feel like apg like a little bit more up and down with this gameplay but if apg pops off then it's like a guaranteed win against any team i would say with optic and maybe that's kind of why like maybe that potential that like apg has and then maybe throwing in formal on top of that maybe or maybe it just could have been all logistics or something it's interesting because when you look at the stats um Again, there was someone on Reddit who posted this. It was a very interesting post. Throughout the entire tournament, Pistola uh, performed really well. He was like one of the top slayers and he made like incredible plays. I remember like a few times he just made like game winning plays, like hands down. Um, but when it came to the matches against Cloud9, that's when he really struggled. That was like the key moment. And when you look at like someone like APG, for instance, he was consistent in the Cloud9 matches. Like maybe he wasn't like a star player, but when it came to that, all three, Lucid, Trippy, and APG, they performed on par, and Pistola was the one who struggled. So maybe even if they got second place, that team determined like, okay, if they can't beat Cloud9, that's what that's that's about all matters at the end of the day, if they could beat Cloud9. And it's very quick, again, it's only one event, but they made the decision and we'll have to see how it plays out. Again, like you mentioned, I really do agree with you on that, saying that I feel like uh, Optic pretty much played at their max capacity. Like, I think they played the best Halo I've seen them yeah. play, and they still couldn't beat Cloud9. So, yeah, it could have just been right. moved based on that. So, now we'll talk about Ola being a free agent now. Do you think Pistola will yeah. maybe start up his own team, or do you think another team will pick him up? Do you think this free agent of Pistola will create some roster changes? It's kind of like a ripple effect throughout the uh, HDS rosters. 
You know, it's tough. Um, I think Pistola is in the same situation that Formal is in. You didn't see Formal at Anaheim for a reason because he didn't really have a team that was available to pick him up. And when you look at Pistola's options now, he's in the same situation that Formal was in before. Um, I think the two teams that come to mind that he could probably join immediately would be E United and FaZe. But I do know, uh, like just from reading like online, um, E United is already pretty solid, solid on their team. Like they're not going to make a team change. FaZe, I don't expect to make a team change either, even though they had like a top eight finish. I, I, I think they're going to stay together. So if anything, that could be the more likely scenario. But this could be a situation where Pistola is sitting out even through Kansas City. Again, like I just don't see a very clear window for him to join unless he really like joins maybe like a, l a lower tier team, which, you know, lower tier is a word, but like just for the placings like SSG, for instance, maybe he'll join Space Station. That could be a possibility as well. Mm -hmm. But um, he, he's in a difficult situation, very similar to how formal was. I don't know what exactly his route is. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure if he knows either at this moment. Yeah, because he's like, you know, Pistol has always been one of the top tier players in Halo and to have him be a free agent. Like, there's going to be either be like if a high level team picks him up, it's gonna, I feel like it's going to cause like a ripple effect of roster changes, everyone picking up each other's players and stuff like that. Or he can kind of start from like the ground up almost and kind of create his own team or have a, you know, like I said, one of those lower teams that might have potential. And then once they pick up Ola, they may pick him like a top eight team kind of thing. Hey, history has shown that if you drop a Sola, you will regret it. Um, I believe <laughs> like it's been like two times where like Pistola has been dropped. Maybe it might just be one like the triggers down drop like back in Halo 3 mm -hmm. and he went on to be part of Final Boss to completely like destroy in the following year. Oh absolutely. So again it's, it's a different time but we'll have to see if history repeats itself here. And now, now the last topic I want to talk about here is we kind of touched on it previously is is Cloud9 really that good? Uh, because at least from what I saw from the Anaheim event that like I feel like the cracks were starting to show a little bit like obviously still dominated like didn't lose a single match. I think there's like one game where they won like three to two, if I remember correctly. That was like the closest I've seen them like possibly lose. You think it's really like these guys are that talented and that good? Or do you think maybe they just found a way to play Halo Infinite the most effective way as of right now? And maybe all the other teams are playing catch up. I think it's just them as individuals. If you look back at Halo 5, they were arguably the best players in the game back then. And they don't even have their best player. Back in Halo 5, like that player was Shotzi. He was the player that really played an unbelievably high level that i know even pros like i was talking to mickwin the other day like he he was like the one player that like he just gave up on like he, there was no way he could even contest the level of shotzi and the fact that they replaced shotzi with penguin who was a great player in halo 5 he was one of the top slayers who didn't have a win i think uh he was a great pickup and they actually teamed with penguin before uh both stellar and eco they teamed back in 2017 so they obviously have some familiarity the fact that they're this good right now is a testament to that core three, Renegade, Stellar, and Eco, of how good they are, how talented they are as just individuals, because they went from Halo 5 to the top, and now they're in Halo Infinite to the top. And they are just starting. Like, they are literally just starting. They, they were on top in 2018. We had that break, and we're here now. My personal belief, I think they're going to be um, unchallenged for quite a bit, unless these teams make a really rash decision, like making us like a superstar squad. It can't be like a one player swap. I think it's got to be something more uh, dramatic and severe. But that's just my opinion. I think Cloud9 right now, they just have too strong of a team. Right, because I was going to ask you, like, do you think any teams like Optic, FaZe, Sentinels, and G2, or even E United, could even come close to C9 at all? Or do you think it's just going to be like, if nothing really changes between these other teams out there, like the two and like two second tier and below, you think it's just gonna be right. Cloud9 just running the way all the way to the finals in October? I think the best chance right now is perhaps Sentinels when they finally find their groove. I think Sentinels was also like I didn't even talk about Snakebite. Snakebite was one of the top performers at Anaheim, hands down. But they didn't play their game uh, correctly. I think anyone who's known Sentinels for a while, they're obviously like the top team in Halo Five they haven't really found like they haven't found their groove yet in halo infinite and i think once they find their groove especially more practice of royal 2 they have that potential to defeat cloud9 i think right now and if the other the other team i would say is perhaps uh the new optic team but again we'll have to see how they play yeah sentinels like they might be just be a sleeping giant right now and just waiting until right. they find mm -hmm. some way they kind of make Halo Infinite click with them. And once they do, it's off to the races for sure. Well, I think that's all I have for you right now, uh, Mr. Devious mm -hmm. Grunt. And so, oh man, 
Uh, I thought maybe like you do this like regularly after every kind of event that happens with HCS and go yeah. discuss it and chat about it and just you know do some analytics and break it all down for the uh, for the people out there. I think it'd be kind of a fun thing to do. Yeah, man, I totally love uh, doing this. Thank you so much for having me yeah. on the show. And uh, if anyone here enjoyed this kind of content, make sure you tap that like button. Let's know you want to see some more stuff like this. Make sure you go subscribe to Devious Grunt Alliance. That channel is, like I said earlier, in the beginning of this video, it's quite awesome. If, any, if anything and everything HCS related, you definitely want to go there to check it out. I'll let you take the final word and uh, send us out. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed our discussion. Again, this is the first of perhaps many more in the future. Um, again, like leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have a great day.